Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Lagrangia, which in all honesty, if I didn't know any better, I would say is the design love child of Stefan Feld and Uwe Rosenberg. But I know that's not true because it's in fact from First Dine Designers, Andreas Odendahl and Michael Keller. Andreas and Mike, wow, you guys really knocked it out of the park. This is a very, very cool Euro-style game all about ye old farm management. Yep, it's a farming simulation all about raising your crops and sending them off to market to score victory points, and oh, is it a good one. Alrighty, so let's jump right into it. I'm going to be doing a two-player run-through today, and I'm going to be showing just what it feels like so you can decide whether it might be something for you. So. Here's my little farm, and at the start, I start with one victory point, which is actually supposed to be secret, and all everybody knows, everybody starts with one, and one buck, one silver. I have one general trade good, and this is a very, very powerful thing to have. Anytime I need to, I can basically trade this with my neighbors, fellow farmers out here in the country, to get four bucks, they'll pay me four bucks for these very valuable goods, or two non-matching um, resources, so I can get like a uh, grain and an olive or an olive and a grape or what have you. I can either draw another farm card or play one of my existing. They'll come over and help me out to you know get some farm upgrade installed. I can get a sow or I can for free, normally it costs a fair bit of money, I can for free upgrade two of my resources. So I could upgrade olives or grain to food, or I could upgrade grapes to wine, or I could, oh this is the best one, upgrade pigs to bacon. Mm. And so this would, no, this would let me do two upgrades for free. And so everybody has one of these at the, at the beginning, and so I've got one, Jen's got one, and we also start with four cards that are various and sundry enhancements and improvements we can make to our farm. Let's see here, and what else? Uh, the, the board is set up. This represents the nearby, I think this is the nearby town of Lagrangia, where there's a big central market, where if we want to, we can actually, as we raise our crops and whatnot, we can put them on wheelbarrows, bring them into town, and start selling them at the market. Or we could take all the crops we create and instead bring them to these various craft buildings where we can basically get the favor of local craftsmen who will help us out in various and sundry ways. All right, that's the big picture. Well, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to raise crops so we can take them to town to score victory points or favors and abilities that will score us more victory points later on. So. At the beginning of the game, the first thing that happens, I actually say at the beginning of every round, here's a nice little nice summary. The, every round, and the game takes place over six rounds, you can see, one through six. Here's the things that are first round, second round, third, fourth, and fifth, sixth. First thing that happens every round is everybody plays one card, one farm card, and then they draw back up to their maximum hand size, which at the beginning of the game is three. Now, in the very, very first turn, it's a little bit different though, because we are actually going to play two cards, which will really kind of set us in a certain direction in terms of what our farm is all about, because it'll make us very unique. <clears throat> and so I've got to choose which of these four cards am I going to play. Now, the central thing, the, the really, really cool thing, let me move these over here. The cool thing about these cards is I can play them for four different abilities. I can play them to the top of my farm, so they slip into these little slots, and that means it becomes a wheelbarrow that I start filling up with, well in this case, grapes and wheat and olives and pigs. And if I get this all filled up, I can truck that wheelbarrow off to town and set up a market stall and start scoring points for the rest of the game as I sell that stuff to you know, the, the townsfolk. Alternatively, I could take this card and I could slip it under the bottom of my uh, card and this now now the card represents some additional worker who I have hired who lives and works on my farm in this case a seed trader who uh, gives me a special power you can use the die to take when you, when you use die to take silver when you're in the revenue phase and you take silver you get you can get one less silver and instead get a harvest good so you get a little bit more flexibility if you're trying to grab silver during the revenue phase alternatively you can take these cards and put them on the right and then they become upgrades to your farm. Where you can see, before I could only store two sows, two pigs, now I can store three. And before I had a hand size of four, now I have a hand size of five, and so on. And finally, you guessed it, I can put it on the right side of my board, 
and it becomes a field because at the beginning of the game, I cannot raise any crops. But if I go over here, I've now got a field where I can raise wheat, which I need potentially to fulfill, to you know, fill up the wheelbarrow or to you know, deliver wheat to one of the two tra traffic people in town. So every card you've got, and at the beginning of the game, you've got four and you have to play two, there are four different ways you can play. So for all intents and purposes, I've got 16 cards here in front of myself and I've got to play two of them. Let's see here. Now, so I, I, what I found the best way to make a decision is, first of all, look at what the special abilities are. You know, because they all can upgrade your farm, give you bigger hand size, give you more deliveries or more income. They can all let you grow crops. They can all give you different victory points for the different wheelbarrows you can fill up. But the most important thing is what special ability they have. Shack Builder. Each farm extension, so I can extend my farm for less. It, it gets pretty expensive to start extending your farm and getting more uh, income and whatnot. So it's cheaper if I have a shack builder. Agricultural worker, sell one harvest good from one of your fields at first price. Normally, the goods you're growing out in your fields, you cannot just sell them directly. You have to take the time to put them in the wheelbarrow and cart them off to town. This just lets you shortcut that and just sell them immediately for profit because you have an agricultural worker. Oil miller, remove one olive from one of your fields to play one card. Ah, so if I'm growing olives, I can just, you know, rather than, um, you know, trying to convert those olives into olive oil or anything, I can just use those olives to immediately, uh, via the oil miller, get another card into play, which might make for a nice combo. And then finally, seed trader, when I use a die to take, oh, and this one I mentioned, if um, midway through a round, there's gonna be dice here, and if I use a die that's uh, a number four die, to get four bucks, I can instead take three bucks and one resource uh, that I want. So those are the, but there's more to consider because um, well, you know, these are all nice powers. They're all very good and you know, they kind of give me a direction to go in. But there's other things. I could use these for, um, you know, I could put them at the top so they effectively become wheelbarrows that I'm trying to fill up with goods. So maybe I want to like set up a wheelbarrow so I need to get olives and food, and then maybe I want to have, say, a wheat field over here so I can grow wheat, turn it into food to fill the wheelbarrow. So that might be a thing I want to do. Or alternatively, like I said, in town, if I fill up my own wheelbarrows, I take them and I sell them myself in the market, right? Alternatively, I can take this stuff and take it to any of the six trade good houses. But at the beginning of the game, randomly chosen, totally random, three trade good houses have been shut down and won't open up until later. So there's only three trade good houses I can deliver to. The one, the bank, where if I can deliver six of my money to the bank, I will then start earning interest in every round. I'll make three bucks for the rest of the game. So that's pretty cool, but I gotta spend a lot of money to do it. So that means I might want to do something that makes me a lot of money. Alternatively, if I can deliver three pigs over here, only three pigs, to the butcher, I can then get the favor of the butcher, who means I get extra victory points from then on whenever I deliver goods to the marketplace. And then finally, remember these here, this marker here, you know, these markers represent all kinds of stuff. If I put this marker over here, it represents wheat. If I put it over here, it represents olives. Here, it represents those, tr those trade commodities. If I deliver three trade commodities over to this building, I will then start getting an income of a trade commodity every round, and that's hugely powerful as well. So maybe I want to set myself up to fulfill one of these three buildings. You know what? I think I'm going to. I think I want to make a rush and try to become a good pig farmer so that I can um, fulfill that pig need. So let's see what I can do about that. Now that means I am going to want an upgrade that lets me have more space to grow pigs. So currently I can only have room for two. So, now um, all of them will give me an additional space. But then the other thing is, this shack builder as a special power makes it cheaper for me to build um, uh, extensions to my house than normal. So I think of these four cards, the first one I will play is, the, is this card and I will play it as a helper. And so now I have a shack builder. From now on, every farm extension, which means uh, cards when I play them to the right, costs one less than normal. And now for my second one, I will take one of these. Let's see which one. I guess I'll take E. Uh, right, I'm gonna take one of them and put them over here, which increases my hog um, pen size, gives me some income, and increases my hand size. But I got to pick, since they all do the same, which one am I, because I'm also, by getting, putting one of these over here, I'm getting rid of these, basically, wheelbarrow contracts. I'm also getting rid of three wheat fields. And I'm getting rid of all these workers, because maybe I want to hire one of these other workers later. 
Uh, remove olives. I see. I don't think I'm going to really be chasing after olives very much. Oh, but this one, if I grow some pigs and turn them into ham, it's a very nice wheelbarrow to fill up. So that's kind of nice. You know, this one's a, yeah, let's go with this one. I'm going to get rid of the seed trader. So these are the two cards I played up front. Because everybody has to choose. And now normally, to do one of these upgrades, it says right here, the first upgrade I ever put costs one resource of any type I want. One victory point, one dollar, one wheat, one pig, one whatever. But, because I did the shack builder first, I get one cost removed, so this was actually free to build. All right, so those are the two. And then, um, at, at, you know, at, we're, we're in this phase where we play card, we play a single card, although like I said, in the first round we play two, and then we draw back up to our hand size. Our hand size, my hand size now, is four. So I'm gonna draw two more cards. I got a gardener and a haggler. Okay, now Jen, oh boy, she's gotta choose the same stuff. Oh, what am I gonna have her do? Let's see here. All right, there's the wiener. Let's see what's going on here. After you've completely supplied a market barrow, you may play, um, oh, you can, okay, so, if I have this guy as a worker, this guy means I'm very, very good at starting to fill wheelbarrows. To get, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Let's go with this. I'm not even going to look at the other ones. That's a nice start. Let's go with this. All right. So, I remember I get to play two for free. I now have a Wainwright or a uh, barrel maker working on my farm. And what that means is whenever I completely fill up of a wheelbarrow, I immediately get to put another wheelbarrow up here for free. Normally it would cost me an action to do it, but this lets me do it for free. So that means I could start really trying to get a lot of wheelbarrows and deliver them to town and start really trying to control the central market. And now with that in mind, I guess maybe I want to get a wheelbarrow out there so I could start filling it up. Hmm. Although, let's see, so each of these, these require grapes, wheat, olives, this requires grapes and, and wine. You know what, actually what I think I want, now I think about it is, I want to take one of these and put it out here so I could start actually growing stuff. Yeah, because I can fill the wheelbarrow up later. Right off the bat, I don't want to miss my chance, you know, which is step three here. We're in step one, then we go to step two, then step three, where we actually harvest, um, where we actually grow stuff. I don't want to miss my chance to grow any, or I'm sorry, Jen doesn't want to miss her chance to grow anything. So I think she will take this one and she'll slip it under here. So much easier to slip these with two hands. All right, there we go. And so those were Jen's two cards. She's got a Wainwright, so she can build wheel, wheelbarrows cheaply, and she now has one field where she grows grapes. And that's going to be good, because she's going to want to grow these grapes to fulfill, because, well, she's going to want to put these, um, well, so worry about that later. But she's got two potential wheelbarrows that require grapes before they're filled up to send to the market. So she's going to grow some grapes over here. All right. And now, Jen draws back up to her hand size of three, so she gets another card. All right. And we are finished with step, with, uh, step one of phase one. Now we move on to step two, income. We look over here. And however many blue things we got is how much income we've got. I, these are all empty, so we don't get these, but I get $1 income because I got this upgrade on my farm. Jen, however, she gets no income, because you can see, because she's got nothing here and she's got none of these are filled in, so she gets no income. Move on to step three, where we actually grow stuff. I can't grow anything yet because I don't have any fields and I don't have any pigs that I could breed to have baby pigs. So I skip this phase, but Jen, she grows some grapes because she got a field out. And then finally, step number four, we can buy, we can basically buy a roof for our farmstead. We can basically start building our home. And at the beginning of the game in round one, there's this one and this one to choose from. And now normally, whoever is the first player, and that's me at the beginning, I was the first player, whoever's the first player gets to buy first, but in the very, very first round of the game, it's reversed. So it goes in reverse turn order. So Jen actually gets first dibs on these roof upgrades. And now in round one, they only cost one buck. So they're a good deal, and we both started on buck. So Jen is going to spend her only dollar, and she is going to take one of these upgrades. Now which one does she want? This one... Whenever she uses it, lets her take a siesta, and the more, which you know, get, lets you rest. The more you rest, the more you climb up the siesta chart. And if you rest enough in a given round, you can start earning victory points because you're well rested, and so you're very, very happy. Um, also, the higher you are up on rest, the more likely you are to be first player next round. So that's what this does. This one, Jen could take this instead, and whenever she wants to, she could, she had one time in the game, she could take two goods of her choice, a wheat and olive, you know, a wheat and olive, or a wheat and a grape, or whatever. 
I think Jen's going to take this because she's actually planning on fulfilling some contracts before too long. All right, so she's going to take that. She puts it in this first space. Now, as you can see, as she builds more and more roofs, she'll start earning victory points as her house gets bigger. But right now, she paid $1 and she got that. And now she could use this immediately or she could wait until later, but it's a one-time use, this special bonus that she gets. And now it's my turn. I'm going to pay a buck two. And what the heck, I'll take the siesta roof. All right. Now, I didn't have to. Um, you know, I, you know, if I passed on this, there are six more rounds and there's only five spaces. So if there's a round where, you know what, I don't like that bonus, I don't think it's worth the money, I can skip because I can always buy more roofs later. But over the course of the game, they get significantly more expensive. In round one, they cost one. In round four, they cost four bucks. In round six, well, they're expensive. So I'll buy this while the buying is good. All right. So we have finished that. We're now done with phase one, which was, what's it called? I think the farming phase? Yeah, the farm phase. Now we move on to the revenue phase where we roll dice. And now the number of dice is equal to twice the number of players plus one. So we're a two player game, so that's four plus one. There's five dice. Let's roll them. We get a dice roller out here. There we go. So they don't get all lost. All right, oh wow, okay. So these are the revenue actions we can take as players. There's two twos and three sixes. So that means this, this round, we can't do the four revenue spot. So I'm actually really happy. Remember, I had that one that if I'd gotten that helper, he would fix it so that when I come here, I could get goods instead of money. But as it turns out, I wouldn't be able to come here at all because it didn't. So this round, um, Jen and I are going to either be able to activate this action or this action. And uh, it, this goes in turn order. So I'm the first player. I have to take one of these dice and then either activate this action or this action. And you know what? These dice are a little bit rare, so I think I better grab one of these first. So I take it, and that means I get to do this, which is either draw or play a card, my choice, or get myself an olive, a wheat, or a grape. I can do any of those things. Now, what do I want to do? <laughs> uh, let's see. Do, are there any other cards I'd like to play right now that I'd like to get into play? Because normally, you only get to play one card every round. But this is an opportunity to get a second card into play. And so maybe that would be worthwhile. Let's see. And I didn't even look at what my new cards were. Hmm, let's see. So I've got the gardener. Place one harvest good from your farm um, on one of your fields together with a marker from your pool uh, onto this card. You may use both of them as any kind of harvest good. Oh, wow, so you can create wild card goods. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, this is converting olives from your fields directly into cards. You can, now remember one thing I've got, I've got the special power where it costs me less to uh, do upgrades. But unfortunately, you know, even though it costs me less, to put a second upgrade count is gonna cost me two items, minus one, it's gonna cost me one item. Although I could do it, I could like pay this buck I've got to get another upgrade so I would increase my income, increase my storage space for pigs, increase my hand size or increase my delivery ability. That might be kind of nice. Let's say I'm gonna do that, right. So, of all of these, I could take a good, but instead, I'm gonna to choose to play a card. I could choose to draw a card, but I'm gonna to choose to play a card, and I'm gonna upgrade my farm even more. So, and by doing it, I'm getting rid of one of these cards permanently, so which one do I wanna get rid of? Let's see, if I wanna go crazy for growing pigs, I'd probably want it, this, the, these two are the only ones that increase my pig storage. The, all of them increase my income, so that's good, I'll be making more money. These two also, in, these two, instead of pigs, they increase my ability to deliver stuff to town so I can make more deliveries. Hmm, oh my gosh, so many options. Ah, uh, hmm. In for a penny, in for a pound. I mean, maybe I just want to really push hard on this whole pig thing. Why not? I'm going to become the greatest pig farmer uh, Lagrange has ever seen. So that means I'm going to play one of these, which means I'm going to be getting rid of one of these special powers. I guess since this one requires pigs, so this one requires upgraded pigs. Now this one requires pigs, so I will use it. Oh, this one requires, I see. Now this one, but this one doesn't let me grow any more pigs or house any more pigs. Ah, what the heck? Okay, I will do this one. Yeah, here we go. All right. So now I've got to put it here. So I've, incre incre I've upgraded my farm a second time. Oh, this is so difficult to do with only one hand. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down. Arg. All right, come here, you. 
Now I should say, you know, this looks very fiddly, but normally it's a piece of cake. Unless, of course, I suppose you are a one-handed gamer. There we go. So, I have upgraded my farm again. Now, for my second upgrade, cost me two items, minus one because of my shack builder. So I can give up a victory point or I can give up a dollar. A victory point's worth like five or six bucks or something like that. So I'll just give up the dollar because that's all I've got. That's, of all these things, that's the only thing I've got on hand. But now, next round, I will get two income and I've got four places to grow pigs and my hand size is now five. So that gives me more flexibility. So, that was me choosing a two. That was the first. Now Jen's gonna choose one of these dice, and then I will choose another die, and then Jen will choose another die, and then finally, the last die, we will both get to um, use to our advantage. So, now it is Jen's turn to pick one of these dies. And, you know, and after, after we do all that, then we'll move on to the delivery phase, the uh, transportation phase, and then finally, the end of round scoring phase. So let's go on ahead and see if we can, let's see, what does Jen want? Um, well, you know, she's planning on fulfilling contracts. She's got the grape for this, but she doesn't have the wheat. So I think she's going to grab this other two because they're almost gone. She's got a little space to put it here. And that means she could draw or play a card like I did. But instead, she is going to get some wheat. Because she, she can grow grapes, but she can't grow wheat. So um, doing this revenue just got her some wheat, and she puts it over here in her wheat barn. Okay. So now she's got the grapes and wheat she needs to make this delivery. Although, unfortunately, she's still hasn't actually got the wheelbarrow in, so she can't start filling the wheelbarrow. She'll have to do that next round. She'll get this wheelbarrow into play. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, instead of taking the wheat, you know, instead of taking the wheat, because she could have done any of these things, she could instead play a card, put the wheelbarrow into play, so that she could ultimately start to fill it up. So that's an option too, because she can get wheat later. Remember, she can get wheat anytime she wants from this. So I think, yeah, instead, Instead of Jen taking a wheat, she will do what I did. She will play, put one of her cards into play, and she is going to, for free, she is going to, or I should say, wheelbarrows, new fields, and workers, those are free uses of your cards. Putting cards to the right, like I did, costs money, the upgrades. Right, so Jen has got a wheelbarrow, so she's got, um, she has a task now. She wants to get grapes and wheat into this wheelbarrow because that will score her two victory points and will get her another one of these trade goods. And it'll get her some area majority in the town market. So Jen um, took the other two, play, put a card into play as well. Now it's back to me, well I got no choice. I'm gonna take one of these guys, I'll take a six. And so now, I have a choice. I can either take two bucks or I can do a delivery. And as it happens right now, see what delivery could I do? Hmm, nothing really. The only thing I have left is my trade commodity. If I wanted, I could deliver this trade commodity over here and start trying to fill these spaces up so that I can get the permanent late, you know, game income of free trade commodities. So I could do that delivery. But you know what? I want to keep this trade commodity for a while because I might need to swap it out for other stuff. Playing a card, getting a free pig. There's all kinds of stuff I can do with that. So I don't think I want to give this up just yet. So instead of doing a free delivery, which is saying taking one item and putting it somewhere, I will take two bucks. All right. And so now Jen takes the other six and she's got the same choice. She can take two bucks or she can do a free delivery. Hmm. Let's see here. Now, I think... Jen will take the six and she'll do a free delivery. Will she? Yes, she will. She will deliver her grapes that you know she grew this round. And you know, a delivery action means you can take the stuff you're growing in the fields or the stuff you store in your or your trade commodities. You can, you can take any of those or money for that matter, um, and you can deliver it either to the wheelbarrows you're setting up. Which, rep which symbolically represents you delivering those items to town to set up your market stall, or you can deliver them to the trade guys. Jen is going to take these grapes, and she is going to deliver it to her wheelbarrow. So she is halfway towards setting up her market stall in town. Now she just has to get some wheat and deliver that. Okay, so now there is one more six. Both of us get to activate this. And so, um, once again, I don't really have any... I'm just going to take two more bucks. I'm going to be Mr. Moneybags over here. And Jen... Hmm. Let's see here. I think she'll take some money too, because she's totally broke. And money is important in this game. So Jen just took a little bit of money herself. So we have now finished the revenue phase, which is you know when um, we each uh, take our dice and then we all take the last die. Now we move on to the delivery. 
Now, everybody, you know what? Actually, we're halfway through a round. I think this is a pretty good stop. If you'd like to, you can hit the button that's on screen to follow the show notes or follow the show notes to go to the extended playthrough where I will do the second half, where we will actually have to, in secret, choose donkeys. And how many donkeys and how much we're going to rest determines how much stuff we can deliver and also how um, likely we are to be first player and how many points we're going to score for having a siesta. Then, if we fulfill contracts, we can uh, you know, potentially make some good stuff too. And then finally, at the end of the round, we'll score. So if you want to see the rest of it, hit the button on screen or follow the show notes to go to the extended playthrough. And I'll probably play through like at least one more full round. Or you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.